In this video, we're going to take a look at why you might choose to use jQuery in your web development. We'll also take a look at an HTML file that uses both standard JavaScript and jQuery, and we'll compare and contrast the two methods. The short answer to the question, why should I use jQuery, is that it will help you develop faster. And part of the reason for this is that you'll typically write less code using jQuery than you might write using standard JavaScript. Another reason that jQuery has been adopted so widely is that the author of the jQuery library has definitely benefited from the knowledge and the mistakes of the past, so that the code that you utilize in this code library really does improve upon the methods of the past. So it does give you a degree of confidence that you're using methods that are time-tested in terms of the maintenance of the code over the life of the project, and even the performance in the browser. Another benefit of jQuery is that it helps us produce unobtrusive JavaScript. And what we mean by this is simply JavaScript that can be put in a .js file and separated from the contents of the web page. If you've done any amount of web development in the past couple of years, you're probably aware of the tenet known as the separation of concerns that states that the structure of the web page, the code that dictates what the page is composed of, for example, images, paragraphs, tables, lists, etc., should be a very short file with nothing more than basic MXML tags identifying what the page is composed of. Of course, this would not be a very good looking page, so we create another file which dictates the look and feel of the web page, and that file is the cascading style sheet. Finally, the behavior of the website is located in yet another file, typically a JavaScript file. And that's very easy to do when you write jQuery, because when you write standard JavaScript, it's very easy and tempting to place that JS code inside the HTML structure. The same is true of manipulating the CSS with JavaScript, and you can actually do this inside the HTML which defeats the purpose of that separation of concerns. It muddies up our code, and it results in what we used to call tag soup, which makes it very difficult to maintain the code because you're constantly sifting through a very large file in order to find what you need. With jQuery, you can put the code in a separate file, and even the way that you write jQuery simply doesn't lend itself to placing the code in the structured HTML file. So those are just some of the main reasons that you might consider using jQuery. Let's open up a file, JS versus jQuery, so that we can take a quick look at some basic functionality that has been written in both standard JavaScript and also in jQuery. Once that file is open, you can go ahead and run it in your web browser. I'll be opening this file in Chrome, and you can see that it's just a basic website with a standard radio button question asking you to rate the difficulty level of jQuery. And if I go ahead and make a selection, I can see the selection I made in this text input field by clicking the answer with JS button. And by the same token, I can change my answer and get the same result, but uh, by activating a different button, the one that invokes jQuery instead. So both buttons give me the same functionality. Now let's take a look at the code. We'll open the file in any text editor. I'll be using Dreamweaver 5.5 as my text editor. One of the things we talked about earlier was unobtrusive JavaScript. So we scroll up to the script block on line 7. The first function called answerJS is the standard JavaScript code that includes a way of traversing through those radio button answers and locating which radio button was selected, and ultimately placing that answer in the text input field. Now we could take this code and place it in a .js file, and that would help us achieve the separation of concerns and thus unobtrusive JavaScript. But the actual call to this function is inside of the HTML structure. Now remember, this portion of the page should just be about what these elements are. This is a paragraph, for example. This is a form. And this is a radio button. At the bottom of the page, you see two buttons. The second button is the one that the answer with jQuery has no evidence of JavaScript or jQuery code in it. But the one above it, the one that answers with standard JavaScript, has an on-click event handler. And that's what invokes the JavaScript. So line 68 and 69 clearly show us the difference between obtrusive and unobtrusive JavaScript, or JavaScript that's just embedded within the web page. If we scroll back up to the two functions, you can see that there's far less code in that second function. And this is the code that gets the second button to work via jQuery versus standard JavaScript. Both buttons do the same thing, 
but rather than this somewhat lengthy code that uses the for loop, which iterates through each radio button to determine the checked radio button, we simply have this code here in jQuery. So we'll learn much more about this code in subsequent lessons. So this was just a brief look at why we might use jQuery and a quick comparison between standard JavaScript code and jQuery.